Dear the Bard, We have missed you of late, though no doubt you have been kept busy by the political machinations and stout mining practices of the Southern Dwarven clan. Having thoroughly watched your video on the subject, I will concede that Hero Quest is indeed a fantastic board game, though it is not in fact the greatest tabletop game ever made. There is one even mightier, bolder, and with a vaster range of pole arms. This greatest of games, birthed in the primordial chaos of 70s wargaming, has been played by millions of waifs, strays, and heavilums. Many analog and digital games can trace their heritage directly back to its gnarled and hardy roots, and much of its esoteric paraphernalia has entered our collective language, like Monk, Goodberry, and Sturges. In fact, I can no longer recall a time where I didn't check for traps without my ten-foot pole. I hereby enclose my full reply on this rewritable DVD, confident that one day Australia will have a supercomputer powerful enough to reveal its contents. Once you do, I expect your immediate and swift response by homing crow or sign for Griffin Courier. Yours, plus one. Bleh. Dungeons and Dragons is the greatest tabletop game ever made, and anyone that thinks otherwise is wrong. Best thing about D&D is weaving collective stories in lands of high adventure, with only your wits, guile, and funny-shaped dice to guide you. You can try anything, buy anything, be anything, build anything. The only limit is your imagination, with a bit of in-game logic thrown in for good measure. Pro tip, gravity usually points down. It's a cooperative game, where the only win condition is having a good time. You can play it with friends, co-workers, or some randoms you find lurking in a nearby shop. The best thing about D&D are the modules. Just look at the modularity! Full of deadly traps, cracking scenarios, and devious room layouts that will confuse all but the wisest of estate agents let loose from the Nine Hells. Good God, put your thacker away, you dirty old module. There are children watching. Of course, you don't always need to play a module. There is another way, a dark, secret way, only spoken of by the bravest of heroes. Oh yes, the best thing about D&D is homebrew. Not this one, too much whining. It's a DM's way of saying, put your feet up, Perkins, I've got this. And indeed, some of the greatest, most exciting adventures are spawned by the desperate coffee-stained imaginings of a DM's twisted mind palace, usually in the high-pressure environment of the car on the way to the game. What say you, Bump? <coughs> by the power of Grayskull, how did you turn yeast into that? Yeah, Odin's beard, back to the studio. The best thing about D&D is XP. In life, you only get XP by repeated practice and failure at the same skill. In D&D, you get it by farming, and by farming I mean killing innocent creatures. Grinding on goblins is generally frowned upon in polite society, but is a legitimate low-level strat in D&D. At least until you wipe out a few hundred, and the dungeon master gets mad at you. There is a reason indefinite madness is just before XP in the DMG. Gygaxian scholars postulate that your level of happiness is directly proportional to the number of loot drops you get. But I believe it is what you find that matters, rather than how much. Getting the same wooden spoon all the time can get burdensome, which I suspect is why 2nd edition had a distressingly high number of random tables. At least three as I recall. The best thing about D&D is creating characters. And where do you start? With the six key attributes that encompass all of the mental and physical prowess needed to forge a mighty hero of the realm. Roll 4d6 and drop the lowest is recommended as the right and proper way to generate one's vital statistics by prominent chin, neck and face beards. But they were all of them deceived, for the old ways are still the best. True fans, and masters of the game, do 3d6 down the line. No swapsies. We recommend you have a 16. Humbug. Let fate decide my stats, even if I never get more than a 12. After all, who's more heroic? Muscles McGee, or Spuddy Muck Spudface? The best thing about D&D is the DM screen. Oh no, I've been hacked. Not only does it stop your chaotic players from peeking at your carefully crafted adventure, but it also hides that you're watching funny cat videos while the paladin is busy monologuing. The final benefit of the DM screen is that it conceals the fact that you're stealing most of your content from other games. Oops, busted. The best thing about D&D is the open gaming license, or Oggle as I like to call it. By opening up the basic rules to third party content, Watsi opened the floodgates to innovative and exciting, but completely unprofitable new content that only an indie developer would be man enough to conceive of. Supplements, retro clones, and entirely new games sprang forth from the very loins of the Ogle, including this little scamp, hey, Arnold. Its neutering was also pinpointed as the cause of the addition wars that raged in the late noughties, leaving neckbeards and fanboys scattered in its wake. Don't mess with the Ogle, Watsi. The best thing about D&D are the ability checks. In fact, I've started resolving all of my daily activities with skill challenges. It's much more efficient. 
Now, where did I leave my D4? Investigation. Typical. Nature. Is this an apple I see before me? It is not. They cut off his head. What is this game of thrones? And I bet the player just brings back his cavalier in the very next dungeon. He seems the type. History. Yep, Charles II. Honestly, you could have at least changed the name. Acrobatics. That counts. And you said I couldn't do a handstand. Oh no, I've left the lens cap on. Oh well. The best class in D&D is the Bard. Most real-life entertainers who try and play bards use this as an excuse to plink away on an instrument or otherwise prat around, hogging the spotlight and distracting the other players away from the game, which is terrible. However, played right, the bard can be the most interesting, powerful and dangerous of all the adventuring classes. They're a real Swiss army knife. They're the master of wisdom saves, they can buff and heal the team, use all the skills and can access the strongest of spells. Bards, the best class in the game, so you should go and play one right now. Go! Now that the posers have gone, the best class in D&D is the Druid. No other class can scratch their bear behind against a tree one minute and call forth a furious storm of squirrels the next. The Druid knows the speech of plants, birds and men and can walk around looking like a compost heap even in the most prestigious establishments. The only problem with the Druid is that they can't wear anything metal. No doubt to prevent trouble with already suspicious airport security. Have you ever tried to take your antlers on as hand luggage? Hmm? Best class indeed. In fact, I might go and do some druid right now. To the henge! I'm back! Sorry I had to leave. The best thing about D&D is Strahd. Blur. No finer Dracula ripoff has ever been created by mortal men. Except the Count from Sesame Street, of course. The greatest villain of them all. D&D has bravely stolen its monsters from mythology, folklore and the highly starched imaginings of middle-aged men. Though more often than not, every great fantasy adventure starts with your level 1 scrub bravely killing rats, wolves or slimes. Oh well, climb that ladder, noob. Well, there you have it. D&D is so great, it deserves pride of place on my shelf between Machiavelli's The Prince and this book on reinforced concrete. Solid. So, you see, it was a cracking reshelving after all. But there's so much more to talk about that we can't just leave things there. So, it's time for another cracking unshelving of D&D. Oh, yes, the best thing about D&D is the disclaimer. Each is chock full of puns, accidental wisdom and inside jokes. A small reward, no doubt, for the keenest of bookworms. Though it doesn't explain why your local bookstore counts these as games rather than books. For tax purposes, no doubt, crafty halflings. The best thing about D&D are the miniatures. Each more miniature than the last. Especially this one. Look at his little chin beard. You can use them to represent your heroes in combat and to show your players what the monsters look like. I'm watching you, pole arms. And stay away from my sister. It's also a fun plus one hobby, to keep you occupied in between games. Unless you manage to lock up all your friends in the basement, that is. Then it's D&D night every night. I should probably have left a window open or something. Er, uh, make a survival check with disadvantage. The best thing about D&D are the maps. There's no finer way to visualise your world and the environment for your players. It also lets them know which villages they've just burned down. I myself recently acquired this ancient map, detailing a secret labyrinth of tunnels deep within the London Underdark. The colours no doubt indicate the territorial claims of each of the factions that reside there. Perfect for a highly political game of shaky alliances, treacherous intrigue and aggressive beard pulling. It's all there, from the silent walls of the White City to the magnificent dwarven splendour of Hammersmith. Hmm, Piccadilly. Sounds gnomish. Ah, the D20. Whenever there is a chance of failure, Lady Fortune may be called upon to adjudicate the outcome. Along with the damage dice, they form Voltron, defender of the unit... Oh, sorry, wrong script. <coughs> I'll start again. Together they form the noble platonic solids which have been known since ancient times and hold dark new age secrets if you believe in all that Pythagorean cosmic morphology ball plop. Damn hippies, can't you see we're trying to play a fantasy game here? I need these dice to slay a hydra not align my chakras. Such nonsense. Also, D&D uses two d10s because nothing says fun gaming like cold hard percentages. Wait a minute, whose tentacles are these? Roll for initiative. This iconic phrase is a universal call to arms on every continent. The time for talking is over. Now it's time to hit things and take their stuff. Aha! Two. Average. And there you have it. My tribute and rebuttal to the bard, on time and on budget. And I didn't even mention the proud sound. Wait a minute. Elf. Dwarf. Barbarian. Magic user. Dungeon crawl. DM screen. Ow! Hero quest was just Dungeons and Dragons all along. And that's why D&D is so great.